Welcome back. The ultra-rich, craving luxurious living spaces are flocking to someplace unexpected. Five-star hotels, many featuring opulent residential rentals, delivering perks like concierge services, among others. Joining us right now is the owner of Rogers Healy and Associates Real Estate, Roger Healy. Roger, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So uh, people are going to hotels? Explain it. Yeah, it makes sense. It's, it's easy living, and they obviously can live in a place like the Ritz-Carlton, and it, it's a lot Simpler lifestyle, but places like Florida, Chicago, even New York, they're, they're definitely making an appealing play to people that have the financial ability to go and make it happen. But, but can you, like, leave your stuff there in a hotel room? Are you checking in and checking out every time you go? Yeah, I think it's the ultimate lock and leave situation. And obviously it's a hotel, so people, I think the mentality of living in a hotel makes it a lot simpler. But we, we've seen it happen with people doing a, a, it's called a, a like a, living in a condo in a hotel where they can go and obviously purchase there. But the hotel living now is definitely a new trend that's starting to take off. But it's more difficult to get a more on these condo hotels. It was nearly impossible after the financial crisis, and I still think that you better have a lot of cash in your pocket if you're going to buy a condo hotel because it's not that easy to borrow money. Yeah, well, we're seeing at least 30% down on something like that, and these oh, places wow. are not... They're not entry-level purchases. We're looking at a million and a half plus. So, yeah, when they're doing that, it's a lot of second homes. So, yeah, people are not too excited to put that kind of money down. And... and well, and the lenders are not there. The restrictions on getting a mortgage on these properties are notable. Yeah. It's harder, too, when they do have a condo element, like in a separate tower, like in a place like Dallas at the W, which you mentioned, or the Azure, it is harder to go and do it because there's a tower dedicated to just rent residences, another tower to the hotel, so it's called a condo hotel loan. Makes it a lot more difficult, so, yeah, people, you know, do get a little bit weary. Yeah, I remember several athletes um, going and, you know, they, they post up at a hotel for, you know, six to eight weeks at a time. And right. it, it actually was more convenient for them because, uh, as you said, when they got time to leave, whether it's the off season and their training uh, or, or part of the year where they may not have, uh, you know, six months to stay in one location. Right. Uh, and the living's there. A lot, a lot of people, particularly if you're an athlete, entertainer, and you're moving around, you don't want to clean up every day. Right. You want to be able to order your food whenever you can. So if you like to your point, Dagan, if you have the means, it works out for some folks lifestyle. Yeah. It, it is making it a little bit more difficult, though, because places like get, catch one of these short-term leases, which is why I think the hotels are making it more of a long-term play, and they're only allowing like a six-month lease or longer. So maybe that's a you know that's the answer to yeah, the yeah. I wonder if that's that's a good point, Rogers, because I wonder if that changes the trend in this. You mentioned the sustainability of like if this is this a trend? Is this something that's really going to uh, go for a while? You mentioned the athletes, Jack. I'm sure there's demand there, but you mentioned I mean low interest rates have helped to somewhat degree of that, Dagan, but they've also not helped because the lenders haven't been there. What do you think, though, Rogers, about some of the areas of the country with respect to like just let's say better business environments, like in Dallas, for example, Florida? Those are maybe areas that could sustain. Yes. Yeah, I mean. The places that I've done research on that have showed that they're actually doing this are places that tend to be a more volatile market when things slow down. So it really hadn't hit Dallas yet, but places like Florida, Chicago, Phoenix. Chicago, where I am, yes. Yeah, Vegas, the, the cities that 10 or 12 years ago when it was difficult, those were the ones that we saw the rapid decline in. So maybe they're trying to stay ahead of the trends with everyone talking about the real estate market slowing down. So let's talk about that because mortgage rates are down significantly uh, from this time last year. Right. How would you characterize the market right now in terms of real estate and go and go into high end versus, you know, sort of mid income as well? Yeah, I mean, just across the board, it's still been great. The irony is that when they reduced the interest rates a couple months ago, that is really when seasonally it slows down no matter how great or how bad the market is. So if they would have gone and adjusted the rates back in the spring or the early summer, we probably would have seen a different kind of increase. So how's hey, the supply in the market? It, it's it's I mean, it's it's stronger now than it has been, because this is obviously seasonal. People start to slow down. Like we've always found that across the board, wherever we're doing stuff, whether it's in New York or Dallas or Chicago, Miami, whatever. This is when it slows down every single year. People are preparing for the holidays, preparing for the new year. So. You know, it is your classic supply and demand situation, but entry level across the board, the supply is still relatively low. We were talking earlier, I live in Florida, right. uh, and we are just seeing an influx of folks coming from New York to Florida. I coach uh, Little League Baseball and oh, I cool. coach football, and the kids that are from New York are increasing every single season. Have you seen a, a lot of people moving uh, to these places with no state taxes? Yeah, and also places where you can have a more all-American lifestyle. I think that a place where it's, it's, it's less urban feel like you're seeing these gentrification effects in places like Florida in places like Texas where they can go and have a backyard they can have an ability to play catch but yeah it, it's starting to make sense and I think that's the millennial push they're out, they're growing up they're making decisions and they want to be able to afford something yeah. that is, is realistic they got the backyard and they also have no state income tax yeah, yeah. beautiful <laughs> thing yeah. Rogers, Florida, good to Texas. See you. Yeah, thank you so much Rogers Healy joining us we've got the impeachment inquiry now